When building a game in Construct 2, you will often find yourself working with layouts and layers. You can think of layouts as where you lay out or organize the objects that comprise your game. A layout is like a stage, scene, or room where the action of your game takes place. Games normally consist of multiple layouts. For example, if you were building an awesome three-level platform style game, each level would have its own unique corresponding layout. Layouts may also be used for menus, title screens, leaderboards, and so forth. Layouts consist of one or more layers. Layers are like stackable, transparent sheets of glass that objects are placed upon. Layers allow you to group objects in front or behind one another. This is commonly referred to as the z-order. In your math classes, you probably learned that y is the north-south or vertical dimension. x is the side-to-side -side or horizontal dimension. Well, layers allow you to control the third or z dimension. z defines the depth. See the difference between the pixelated 2D version of Mario versus the 3D version. Let's talk about layouts and layers in Construct 2. Layouts are like the levels, the rooms, the scenes, the stages, the thing that your user interacts with that has all the objects. A project, amongst other things, consists of layouts. If you want to add a layout to your project, go into the Projects bar and right-click Add Layout. It'll ask you whether you want an event sheet. In my case, I do, so I'm going to choose Add Event Sheet. I'm going to go ahead and rename mine to Demo. On the left side of the screen, you'll see all the properties that a layout can have. It has a name. Notice how every layout has an associated event sheet. In my case, this is Event Sheet 1. If I go under Event Sheets, I can rename this to make it really clear that this event sheet goes with my Demo Layout. Demo is the name of my layout. Demo event sheet is the associated event sheet that's going to have all my code. And you also see that there's a property called active layer. When you create a new layout, you get one layer automatically called layer zero. I'm going to go ahead and rename this to background because I'm going to create a layout that's got a couple of different layers. All right. If I go to my layout view and I minus, 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 I'll notice that there's this dashed line. The dashed line represents the size of the window. So this is how much of the game the user sees at a time. You'll notice right now my layout is too small for the window. So I need to increase it to be at least the same size as the window. You'll notice the dashed line goes away. What if for some reason my layout was really big? Let's say it was deep. You will see the dashed line. This represents how much the user will see at a time. Once they take the player and they go down the layout, then they'll see more of the layout. But at any given time, they only see the size of the window. Okay, so what do you do with these layouts? With these layouts, you take object types and you place them onto the screen. So for example, I'm going to move this back and go to projects, demo, I'm going to change it back to 1920, 1080. And then I'm going to put myself a little sky background on it. Minus, 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 pull this across, position this. Okay, so I'm done with my background layer on my demo layout. Now I want to start putting some things on my layout, but I want all of them to be on top of the sky background. So with my demo layout selected, I'm going to go to layers and I'm going to click plus, and I'm going to call this layer game. Layers are exactly what they look like. Whatever is on the bottom is what's on the bottom of the layout. Whatever is on top in terms of your layers bar is what's on top in the layout. If you want to hide, not see a particular layer, you can make it visible or invisible this way. 
If you want to make it so that you can't mess up and change that layer, for example, let's say we're done with the background, you can lock it. Make sure that you always know what your active layer is when you're putting objects on the layout. Down here in the status bar, it will show you active layer. For example, any object I place on the layout now will automatically go on the game layer, and that's what I want. When working with layouts, one of the things that's really helpful is to use what's called the grid. It allows you to position things seamlessly and easily. Once again, layouts are used to put objects on. So I'm going to go and I'm going to get myself, let's say, some ground. And I'm going to place this on the game layer of my demo layout. How about some grass? As you can see, when you run the game, the sky background layer is behind the game layer which groups all of the ground and grass objects. What would happen, however, if I switch the order of these layers? If I put game on the bottom, then the background would be on top. So as you can see, the layers are stackable. Whatever's on the bottom shows on the bottom. Whatever's on the top is on top. It's really that simple. Remember, if you lock a layer, then you cannot do anything with the objects you placed upon it. Only after you unlock it will you be able to access the objects upon that layer. Remember, layouts have properties. And just like layouts have properties, layers have properties as well. And we're going to be taking advantage of some of those.